Hi, this is John Schwabes from PolicyViz.com and welcome to another Excel tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to create the visualization you see in front of you, which is basically just a clock, but I'm adding data to the clock face. And so each of these state abbreviations that you see around the clock face represent the average starting time of public schools in each of those states. So for example, in North Carolina and South Carolina, public schools start on average at 8 a.m. New Mexico on average starts at 8.01 a.m. So what we're going to do is take this on its face, what is geographic data, we're gonna use it in this clock formation. So here's what the original data look like. Uh, you can see this comes from the National Center for Education Statistics and you can see for each state in that first data column, we have the average start time in the morning for public schools around each of those states between 20, in the 2017-2018 school year. And so you can see, on average, for the nation as a whole, schools start at 8, 10 a.m. In Alabama, they start at 7.49 a.m. In Alaska, they start at 8.30 a.m. Now, on policyviz.com and also in a couple other videos on my YouTube channel, I've already talked about other ways you can visualize these data. But in this particular case, I like this clock idea. And let me go back and show you exactly how we're going to build this. It's just a different way to think about plotting geographic data as they relate to time. And when I think about creating this particular visualization in Excel, really what I need to recognize is that this is essentially just a scatter plot where I'm going to put those points for each of the minutes and each of the hours and each of the state abbreviations along a circle of a different size. So I'm gonna build that clock face around a circle. I just need to figure out what the X dimension and the Y dimension is going to be. Then I'm gonna make a slightly bigger circle for the first row of state names. So that would be South Carolina, New Mexico, Georgia, Tennessee. And then I'm gonna have a slightly bigger circle for the uh, state abbreviations that are along that sort of second row here. So Vermont, North Carolina, Maine, and a third ring. You can see as they sort of go out further and further. So as long as I can figure out how to create a circle in Excel using a scatter plot, I can create a graph like this. So let's go over to the spreadsheet and show you how this is pulled together. So there's multiple pieces going on here. And as you can see, I've color coded each of the segments of my worksheet so you can see how to build this visualization. So first we're gonna start with building the clock face and then we'll talk about adding the data. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to add the hours and the minutes of the clock face here in the orange for the hours and here in the pink for the minutes. And you can see here that I've noted each of the hours. I want the 12 o'clock hour to be in the zeroth position. So I want it to be right at the top. And so that's gonna be the 90 degree position in my thinking of how the clock is going to be built. But what I need to recognize is that Excel doesn't work in degrees, it works in radians. So what I need to do is use this formula to do the conversion and then to find the position along that outer circle, I actually need to do one more conversion. And you're gonna see I use this long formula up here with the cosine function. No, I did not remember how to do this. I had to go out and uh, learn my trigonometry all over again to figure this out. But you can see here, all I'm going to do is take those degrees, feed it into uh, this, this formula, and I'm going to scale it by the radius of the circle. So the first circle I'm going to build, the clock face of the circle, is going to have a radius of 0 0.45. So let's build that clock face just so you could see what it looks like. So I'm gonna highlight columns D and E here to create this first piece of the visualization. So I'm gonna select a scatter plot. I'm gonna make this format size just bigger. I'll just make this six by six so you can see it. And as you can see here, I've got 12 points around the circle and they intersect at the 0.45 position on each of these axes, which is the radius of that circle. So that's going to be the numbers of the circle. Let's add the minutes. And so I'm gonna select my data. And I always like to label my data, my series name. So I'm going to select in the name here and I'm gonna select cell A1 and you can see now I've had that named. Now let's add the minutes. I'm going to name it minutes. And very simply, I'm going to select the X values and the Y values using the same formula as before. So I had to do a little bit of work to figure out exactly where these should go. And if you go over to my website, policyviz.com, you'll be able to download this file. So now I have the minute set up here. Let's do a little bit of formatting for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to format this data series. This is the minutes data series. And like I've shown in other videos on this YouTube channel, 
you can format these little markers. I'm gonna change them to this little dash and I will make them a dark black color just to make them sit there. And now I'm going to select through my format tab, I'm going to select the hour series and I'll make those markers for the hours. I'll make those square. This is just obviously aesthetics and how I think it looks good. And I'll make it, you know, maybe eight point, nine point. I'll make that black as well and I'll put no line around it. And so you can see here, I've got the basic clock face with the axes going out to 0.5 along each of the dimensions Y and X. So again, there's a little bit of math that has to go in here to get uh, the, the, the radians into or the degrees into radians for this to work in Excel. But once you have that formula, it's really just about plugging and playing and getting the scatter plot to work. So let's slide this over here and let's look at the actual data. So what I have is all the state names in column L, the state abbreviations in column M, and the start time in column N. And so you can see I have my data sorted by start time. I've got in this peach colored cells, the states that start in the seven o'clock hour, and in the blue cells are the states that start in the 8 a.m. hour. So I'd of course separate, I could of course separate these out into different parts of the spreadsheet, but I just have them color coded here, um, just for this particular visualization, a little bit easier to do it that way. All right, so now we need to figure out where we want to put each of these state abbreviations around the clock face. So to do that, just like we did with the hours and the minutes for the clock face, we need to figure out the position of the minutes uh, around the clock face for each of these states. So first thing I'm going to do from the, from the actual time, I'm going to extract the actual minute using the minute formula. So it's just minute of the time, so I get 48. I'm going to convert that to degrees, which again, I'm using a little bit of math here to figure out how to convert the uh, degrees over to radians for this to work. I actually ha also have to adjust it because I'm setting my 12 o'clock position at zero. If you remember over here, this is at zero. So that's the 90 degree marker. And 11 o'clock, I'll just scroll down here, 11 o'clock is going to be negative 240. So that's over here. So I need to do some adjustment here to get these times you know, to the left of the, the top of the hour. So I'm gonna do 90 degrees minus, and you can see I have 90 degrees minus that, that raw degree value all the way down. So now what I need to do is convert these degrees to the X and Y coordinates. Now to do that, I need to create the different radius for these different circles or these different rings. So remember, we're starting with our clock face that has a radius of 0.45. The next circle, which will be the inner set of states, will be slightly bigger radius. I'll set it at 0.5. And then I'm going to stack those up. Why do I need to stack them up? Well, notice that some states start at the same time. So West Virginia and Louisiana, for example, both start on average at 7.53 a.m. So I'm going to have to stack these states up outside the circle so that you can actually read them. Okay, so I need to do a few things to get that to work. The first thing I need to recognize, obviously, is that each ring is gonna have a different radius. So you can see here that West Virginia is gonna have a radius of 0.5, Louisiana 0.55. If I go down here into this set of states, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Delaware, New Hampshire, all of which start at 8.06 a.m., I need to set these up at four different radii. So 0.5, 0.55, 0.6, and 0.65. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use a little lookup table and I'm going to look up each of these different rings. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have it set up to seven just in case I changed the data or updated the data, but it could be whatever you, you need. And you can see for that ring of one, that first observation, that first state is gonna be a radius of 0.5. If there are two states that have the same time, the second state's gonna sit on the circumference of a circle of radius 0.55. For a combination that has three states, the third state will sit on the ring that has a radius of 0.6. Now I could just type this in and do it manually. There's only 50 observations here, so it's not that difficult to do, but I'm actually gonna use a little count if formula in column U to make this really fast. So I'm going to use a count if formula. And so what count if simply does is count the number of observations within a range. So here I'm just counting between cells N2 really N2 to N2, I'm counting the number of times the value in N2 shows up, so I should naturally get a one. Let's go down one more, and you can see by having these locked references here, the dollar signs, I now have a range looking between N2 and N3, counting the number of times N3 shows up, and again, it's just one. But now let's go down to Louisiana, which is our second state. 
uh, that starts at 7.53 a.m. Here, the range runs from N2 to N5, and I'm counting the number of times 7.53 a.m. shows up, and as you can see, it occurs twice. So I have that two set up. And let's just show it one more time down here for our other four states. If I drag that count if formula down, now I'm counting between cells N2 and N19, the number of times 8.06 a.m. showed up, and you can see that it shows up four times. And so that ever expanding range, as I drag that count if down, allows me to create this little counter for each of these groups of states. So now that I have that, all I need to do for my ring is to use a VLOOKUP. And if you're curious on how to use a VLOOKUP, check out some other videos on this YouTube channel, but all I'm going to do is look up the little counter in my lookup table. So this is on the first ring, it's a radius of 0.5, and that goes in column R. For Louisiana, for example, it's going to be on the second ring, so it's gonna look up in the lookup table, and that's gonna look up the radius of 0.55, and it continues, so on and so forth. And so again, for our other four states here, you can see that New Hampshire, for example, is gonna be the fourth state, it's on the fourth ring, and so the radius for that little circle should be 0.65. So now that we have all this, let's add the data to our chart. And again, we could do this a lot of different ways. I have this set up as two different series, one for the set of states that start in the 7 a.m. hour, and another set of states that start in the 8 a.m. hour. Now here, I don't always like to do this, but in this case, I'm just gonna type in the name of the hour. So here, I'm just gonna select my X values for this set of data. And again, I could put these in different columns if I wanted, but, but for this particular visualization, with only 50 or so observations, I don't necessarily need to do all of that. So I'm going to grab all of these X values for those states that start on average in the 8 a.m. hour, X and Y, and I'm gonna hit OK. And you can see now I have a bunch of blue dots for the 7 a.m. hour and a bunch of orange dots for the 8 a.m. hour. Also notice that Excel has changed the dimensions of both our x and y axes. So now this x axis, for example, goes from negative 0.6 to positive 0.8. So we want this to be a circle. So I'm gonna to have to change this. I'm gonna format my axis. And here my maximum uh, ring is 0.65. So I think I can go from negative 0.65 all the way to positive 0.65. That will put that state right at the edge, and I need to do the same thing over here, 0 0.65, 0 0.65. And now I'm just gonna delete these, these axes because they are confusing the view. I'm gonna delete my grid lines, and you can see that I've got my state here. Let's add the center label to this visualization. So I'm gonna select data, and I have one more series I'm going to add. Now I'm going to actually label this series with the name of the title that I want to use as the title. So I'm actually going to have this really long uh, name for this series, but it's actually going to work out for me in the end. So for the X value, this is just going to be at the origin of the circle. So zero and zero, and I'm going to hit okay. And now I've got a little point there. So now you can see I've got all the points on the chart that I need, and now it's a matter of doing the labeling. So let's start with the state names. And you can see by having these two series, I can do these separately, which is which is pretty nice. So I'm gonna add data labels, and I'm gonna select the new labels. If you're not familiar with how the data labels work, check out a couple other videos on uh, this playlist. I have a few others, especially on this great tool, the value from cells option in Excel, which will allow you to click the box and simply select the series that you want to use as labels. So that's just gonna be my state abbreviations hit OK, I'll get rid of the Y value, and I'll center those right on the point so you can see they're lined up. Let's go and do our other series. So this is the 8 a.m. states. Again, I select the labels. I select value from cells. I select those state abbreviations. Hit OK, remove the Y value, and center the points, center the labels on the points. And while we're here, let's get rid of those labels, they're the, the dots themselves, so they're a little, they're obviously not necessary, so I'm just gonna go to my Format tab, use the dropdown for the 7 a.m. series, I'll go over to my Format Data series, and I'll turn those off, and I will go back and select the 8 a.m. series, and I'll turn those markers off. And you can see, I now have the labels. We could also add some color here, so let's add a little bit of color. 
Now I've already got this colored in the spreadsheet, so why don't we just stick with those colors? So I'll use the blue for those, and I've got that peach color there, so we can use the orange for, for those states. So you can see I've got the labels all set up. All right, now let's label the hours around the clock face. So we're gonna use a similar approach. I'm going to select not the minute series, I need to select the hour series. So I actually need to go to my drop down and grab that. Right click and add data labels. And you can see here, this added the minutes. So I don't want all of the minutes. So, so that's just one thing you need to be careful of when you do this selection. I wanna select the hour series and I wanna make sure that I add the data labels for that series. So you can see why it's important to use this format tab, use this drop down menu and just select the right series. So here once again, label options, value from cells. I'm gonna scroll over and pick the actual values of the numbers here of the hours, turn off the Y value. And now here I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of, of, of manual formatting. So I'm gonna put these labels below and I like that for these three at the top, but not so much for the rest. So I'm gonna select the 10 o'clock hour. I'm gonna move that to the right. And if I just keep doing this, if I just select one after the other and don't select the entire series, I don't need to select it all over again. Let me show you what I mean. If I sort of miss the six o'clock and I grab the six o'clock again, notice how all the labels are selected. So I need to click twice. So if you wanna label an individual label off the series, you sort of have to select twice. So, but if you keep, you just, you know, kind of get lucky a little bit and select the right label, you don't actually need to, uh, to do that double clicking and you don't need to reopen the menu. So if you just select one at a time, it is worth going a little bit slower just to get that right. And so here I've got all the labels where I want them around the clock face. And now I can format these a little bit. Maybe I'll make these a little bit bigger. Uh, just a little bit bigger, maybe maybe boldface, I don't know. We could play around with that a little bit. All right, and the last piece here is to put the label on in the middle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, add a data label. And in this case, when I select, I'm gonna call the series name. And I'll turn the Y value off and I'll center it. And again, let me go back up to my format and turn off the label. Now here, it's sort of interesting because in the newer versions of Excel, you can do a lot of formatting with these labels depending on how you've added them. I'm gonna make this quite big so you can see it. So here, if I have the eight states that public schools that start on average in the 7 a.m. hour, I want that text to be orange, but I want the states, the other states to start in blue. So I can't actually color this text. You can see I'm trying to grab different pieces of the, of the text. I can't actually color the text differently within this label. So I actually have the rest of the text that I want to include here. I'm just gonna copy that. And if I double click in the label, I can type and, and then copy and paste that extra label. And you can see now what I can do is, I can go in and format a little bit here, and now I can change the color of this label so that it matches the labels I picked for the state names. And so by using not just the value from labels, but actually naming the series with this one part of the label, I actually can then do a little more uh, additional formatting. And so then I can go in, I can play a little bit more if I wanna format these states a little bit more, make maybe the labels a little bit bigger. I'd of course add a title here if I wanted. But as you can see, I now have these geographic data, one observation for each state, it's a time of the day, I can plot it around a clock face. Is this better than a histogram or a map or a table? I don't know, but it's certainly kind of fun and it's certainly interesting to look at and it's a different way to look at the data and it's certainly fun to build in Excel. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you go over to policyviz.com, you can download this Excel file and build your own data-driven clock. You can also build some of the other visualizations that I mentioned in that blog post, including a histogram with names and a tile grid map. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out other videos in this series and be sure to subscribe.